a little bit of parting powder to keep the sand from sticking. A little bit of facing sand to leave a smooth texture on the surface. Good morning. What is the parting powder? Is that like a talcum or what is that? Yeah, uh, it's like that. It's, this is a commercially prepared one. I'm not sure just what it is. In the old days, what did they use? A flour or something? Sea coal? Sea? Something like that. I never did figure out exactly what it was. Bentonite. Didn't they use a lot of bentonite? I'm not sure if they... I don't think they used that for parting powder. Oh, for parting powder. Yeah. That, that, yeah, they use, uh, well, nowadays olivine sand, but uh, yeah. mostly uh, silica sand, sharp silica sand. A little bentonite and a little water is basically all you need for molding. You need some sand that'll stick together and it'll still allow gases to escape out through it. Now this is commercial sand that you've got here or this yeah, is... Yeah, this, this started out as uh, Petrobon. The dark color is just, it's just been burned. Does it get better as it burns or...? Well, you gotta keep adding clay right. because of, and oil because it burns the clay out. I gotta do this. This is on the to-do list someday. Yeah. Once I started thinking that I'd like to, it took me two or three years. Yeah, fancy expensive tools in this yeah. process. You always want to cut the sand. You don't want to pull it out. It yeah. So even though you rammed it up, it'll still take the impression because it can always be rammed a little more. Uh, or do you have the the mold in there already? It's in there. Oh, yeah. it's in there already. That's the part that probably gets you a couple of times when you first start out. There's the the one half. What's this going to be? Oh, yeah. That's the other half. That's the other half. The register yeah. pins. Conical pins. It's good. Always find center that way. Parting powder again. This is where it's really important to get the parting powder on the sand so that yeah. this side doesn't <laughs> stick to it. Again, a fancy tool. Yeah. <laughs> I got just a little much stickiness in the sand yesterday. I put too much clay oh, yeah. in it. So it really sticks together. It'll burn out. If I was doing professional quality stuff, then I would yeah. adhere a little more to the recipes and so on. A lot of the professional guys use new sand every time. Yeah. What do they do with the old stuff? They just throw it away. People well, like me glean it. Yeah. Well, if you're making money, you just build it into the price. Sure. So you just riddle the top layer that's going over the mold. Yeah, right? just the stuff that's right next to the that surface. You get rid of, you know, there's little rocks and... Yeah. And I guess you could go even finer if you wanted more detail, too. Yeah, you can use different kind of sands, it doesn't matter. Anything you do in the sand will magnify. You know, if you have a blemish in your yeah. pattern, it'll be 
magnified in the sand because you always wiggle yeah. a little bit to loosen it. So you make the patterns smaller than the part? A little larger. A little larger. To allow for shrinkage. Right. All right. This is this how you do it? Pretty much. Gets hard on the arm, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you take one of those power concrete tampers and just... They actually <laughs> use some of them guys, they use the air gun. But I used it, I made a thing for my air gun, but it, uh, that was harder to hold that up. Than I know, it it's just, hard on the rib. Uh, I've been trying to find a uh, jolt squeeze, but I haven't come up with one of them kind of hard to come by. What's a jolt sweep? That's a big machine that you put the, the flask on and you pour sand on it and it's got a squeeze that comes down and while it's squeezed you hit the air and it's got an air cylinder that raises it and jolts it. Oh yeah. And you don't have to ram it and so on. Because I guess you couldn't just press it under with like a hydraulic press or something. It's well, it's an air cylinder, yeah. right? Air yeah. press. Yeah. But you need the shock to sort of... The shock is what makes the yeah. sand get around everything. As that... you know, a couple of machinists communicating. <laughs> get rid... And that takes a core, which is nice, rather than just driving a rod in. It also cuts rather than scrapes. My mark is gone off of here. I picked up some of the parting sand just on the top layer there. Yeah, it's just where I want to be. Well, you sort of wear it smooth there anyway, so you can kind of tell. Yeah. And is that kind of squished oval on purpose, or is it just the way the tube's gotten over? The That's just from beating it. <laughs> You should have said, yeah, 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 you got to get it to exactly the right. If you don't have that point there. Yeah, it is, yeah. Then we need a, a uh, reservoir. Yeah. When the pattern shrinks. Yeah, it'll come up. It'll, It'll pull the molten metal from here down in rather than leaving a shrink cavity in the right. part itself. Would this casting, um, this sand work for cast iron also? Or? Yes, it does. So That's probably why this is so black, because I have done quite a bit of cast iron with it. Oh, you built a cupola? Not yet. No. And I don't think once I get that going that I can afford to buy sand for it. No. <laughs> I'm going to do the water process with that. But the reason I got into this oil stuff because I never I got to pour maybe once a month or once every two months. Yeah. And with the water tempered sand it dries out no matter how good you bag it. Mm -hmm. So how long do you got to let that sit, or can you just pour immediately? It's ready to pour. There you go. As soon as I take the pattern out. You make it look easy. It is. There's really nothing to it. It's just like kissing your mother-in-law. Nothing to it. <laughs>